Hey friends, just wait a couple of seconds and see what's going to happen right in front of the camera. You will see it right now. Give it a couple of seconds. There we go. That right there is a spark. And that is a spark igniter. And you have about 10 to 15,000 volts going there, creating that spark. So it is somewhat dangerous. But yet, we have to troubleshoot these. So how do you do it? Well, in today's video, we're going to go over on how to troubleshoot a spark igniter. So you'll typically see these out in the field. These are hot surface uh, igniters. Uh, you have this special type of material up here that when you buy it, of course, you don't want to touch with your hand because the oils in your hand can, can disrupt it. Uh, but a special type of material that turns cherry red. And then you have two wires that come out. And these are pretty simple to troubleshoot because let's say I were to disconnect it from the furnace and I have it here in my hand, you're simply ohming it out. And most manufacturers are asking to see about 40 to 90 ohms on just on this part. And of course, the board sends 120 volts to the hot surface igniter. And that's what create, uh, causes it to turn cherry red, uh, creating the spark uh, for your flames. But what about a spark igniter? Well, you saw in the previous video, um, the little thunder, a little spark, but this is what a, a spark igniter looks uh, closer up. So you typically have a wire coming out from here. And then this part, not that part, this part here receives about 10 to 15,000 volts. So it is dangerous. Uh, it is somewhat dangerous, but, um, and you might think, well, the higher the voltage, the less the current, but it's still dangerous. So you do want to be careful when checking these. And I'll show you how to, how to do that right now in a, in a brief moment, but this part here receives 10 to 15,000 volts, right? And you have a wire coming out, going to a little transformer, which I'll show you in a bit. And then this part right here, this part right here is, you can think about it, it's the ground. Now, this part here kind of connects to the actual metal, to the furnace itself. So that is why it's important your screws on the sides are pretty tight to make, make a good ground connection. So look at this one right here. This one's a little bit different. This one here, so this part here receives 10 to 15,000 volts. And then you might think, well, this is plastic. This is not metal, how is it making a good connection? Well, follow my ground, follow my ground. You see it comes out through this wire and then this has to be grounded to the furnace, to the metal part of the furnace so it can arc. And you know, just to kind of show you an idea, I got the 24 volts right here, and this is current. And so what you're doing with the spark igniter, of course, that's higher voltage, but you're creating that spark, you see? All you need is a spark um, to, create that, uh, to create that flame, and you can see I'm creating that spark. But of course, don't do this out in the field. I'm just giving you an idea uh, what, why, um, um, how the spark igniter uh, works. The, the gist of it. But here on that board, you see the little uh, transformer right there. That transformer, I mean, it's it's crazy. The, the system itself takes 120 volts. That transformer somehow gets it to, to come out or shoot out with 10 to 15,000 volts. So that is pretty epic. But you simply have a wire that you connect right there, right? And so um, that wire there, uh, that wire goes all the way, this orange wire goes all the way to my spark igniter. So to test it, I mean, the first thing that I like to do, there is a couple of different ways. Um, you can get that orange wire out of that transformer. So I'm going to get that orange wire. And then you can get this part here. And so let me see if I can zoom out here so I can show you. Uh, you're going to get that orange wire. So I'll put it on continuity. All I wanna check right now first, first thing is that I have a good path from the wire to the spark igniter. That's all I want. So I'm gonna put one lead, make sure I can read continuity, okay? I'm gonna put one lead right here on this uh, wire down here, cause I want this one I can take out from the actual little transformer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up here to the spark igniter and you can see it back there. Now, of course, I, I'm not gonna just, just touch the wire. Nothing's gonna happen or touch this, the white part or the metal. I'm touching the actual rod back there. 
So right now I am touching that rod back there. You see, and you probably, let's see if I can zoom in and show you a better uh, picture. There we go. You see, I'm just touching the metal part, okay? So all I did is I just want to make sure I have a path because that wire can be bad. A lot of things can happen to the wire. Okay, and so the next step is we're going to go ahead and check it with power on. Okay, so the thing about using a, a meter uh, to check a spark igniter is that you cannot. You cannot do it. Uh, this meter more or less can check up to 600 volts. This spark igniter shoots out 10 to 15,000 volts. So if you do it, um, your fuse will probably go bad. Or if your meter doesn't have a fuse, your meter will go bad. And you can't even check amp drive. Tried it and I'm reading zero. So the way that I'm going to show you is uh, by using an inline spark tester. So what does that look like? Well, it's simply the inline spark tester. tester. You got two amps and you got this little spark right here. And the idea is if you want to make sure that the, the board is sending um, 10 to 15,000 volts and that the spark igniter is sparking, you'll see this light flash, which I'll show you. But it basically has two ends. Uh, now, the only downside about this is that, uh, for example, right here, I can't just plug in and play. Um, they, don't, they don't have uh, specific adapters, at least that I know of. You see, I just simply have two, um, two holes like this. And most people use these uh, when um, checking spark plugs. Because basically, spark plugs are the same concept as sparks. So they use these to check spark plugs. But this inline spark tester can also work here. And I'll show you. So the way I do it, I don't use jumper cables that are kind of thin. Like these right here. I don't use those. I use uh, pretty thicker ones that you can get anywhere. These are uh, little thicker jumper cables. So simply put, all I do is get one end right here. I put it on the, on the transformer and then I get my um, uh, spark tester. It doesn't matter if I go on this side or on that side, but let's just go on this side. Okay, you see, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it so I protect myself, so you see. Now I'm touching plastic, it's a little safer. So, so then this one here, I'll go ahead and put it here on this side. Okay, just make a good connection, cover it. And on this part here, what I like to do, just to play it safe, because uh, you always want to be safe, I'll get a little bit of tape. If this tape cooperates with me. And then I'll go ahead and just tape the the part that is um kind of bare okay that's it so i basically just have a path it's just a long path and then i get this why this uh this part here going to the wire that was originally connected on the transformer okay so i have everything connected and of course when checking this one too you want to make sure you kind of um cover it Right, you can see right there, I'm gonna cover it, cover over it, just to prevent it from arcing into my actual furnace. So make sure nothing's kind of jumping everywhere. You see, I have all the wires here. I, I'm keeping an eye on, on, on everything. Um, everything's covered, nothing's bare. Um, so yes, I wish they had a specific spark tester where it just plug, plug, plugs in and, and that's it. You can get it to work, but they don't, at least that I know of. But I make sure by taping it off, I'm making sure that I'm not gonna get shocked. So, like I said, it's just one. This big, this wire comes out. It comes out. It goes through my spark tester, and then it goes right there. And this is coming. It's going to another jumper cable, right? And this jumper cable is going to that orange wire that's gonna go to my spark igniter. So, I want you to pay attention to. I'm gonna turn on power. I'm, I want you to. Pay attention to this right here, okay? So let's go ahead and get power to the system. Okay, call for heating. All right, the inducer draft motor turns on. We're going through all the steps. Just pay attention to that right there. And of course, and like I said, I'm making sure nothing's gonna arc to anything. Everything's protected. I taped off the things that I, I needed to tape. 
that were bare, but look at that right there. An inline spark tester. Give it a second. Yep. You saw that, right? And then I got my flames. So uh, you can do this test. This is the way uh, I do it. Uh, they sell them pretty much anywhere. Um, I'll put the one that I got on the on the description so you can get it. Um, and this is just to test that the spark igniter is working. And if, if you get that thunder, that flashing, that's because the spark igniter is good and you have a good ground. It's actually arcing to something. So you know that it's working properly. Um, if you've checked that everything up here looks good and um, you don't see that, then it might be a bad board. It might be a bad transformer. Another thing that you can do is, let's say if you remember your steps, right? With the spark, if you're getting 24 volts going to your gas valve, and you can check it, right? You check 24 volts going to your gas valve, but no spark. That's another indication that it could be a bad board, right? Because first it's your spark, then your gas valve. And if your gas valve is receiving 24 volts, but you're not getting any spark, especially with this in, um, step included, right? No spark, then it could be a bad transformer or a bad board. So yes, you can do a continuity test just to make sure the wire is good from here all the way to the uh, spark igniter and then use an inline spark tester making sure that you do things safe and if it sparks great if it doesn't and you get 24 volts in the gas valve you most likely have a bad transformer and you'll have to replace the board i hope this video helps guys and i will catch you in the next one